Hi, I'm Megan and welcome to my kitchen. In today's video, I've got three easy and delicious recipes that would be perfect for the upcoming Super Bowl weekend. So if you'd like some recipes or ideas for Super Bowl Sunday, just keep watching. First up, I'm making cowboy caviar. This is a family favorite. My husband especially loves this. He requests that I make it every once in a while, and I'm happy to because it is easy and it's super delicious. Now, I make mine just a little bit differently than what I've seen other recipes like on Pinterest and things for, so I'll show you how I make mine. Feel free to customize it. Use whatever you like. If I use something and you don't like it, skip it. It's your kitchen. You make it your own. Let me show you the ingredients that I use. First, I've got some garlic powder. I normally also use minced fresh garlic, but I was out this day, so the garlic powder will work just fine. I've got a can of corn, a can of Rotel, or the Walmart version anyway, of diced tomatoes and green chilies. Sometimes I use the can Rotel if I've got it on hand. If I don't, I just use a can of diced tomatoes. Next, I normally add some diced bell pepper. I didn't have any this day, but I did have about a half a jar of pimentos left over. I'd made a pimento macaroni and cheese a couple nights before, and I wanted to use those up, so I added that. I've got some black-eyed peas, black beans, jalapeno, cilantro, red onion, and I ended up adding some lime juice later. It's not pictured here, though. And then lastly, Italian dressing. Now, I know that might sound a little bit odd. It doesn't taste Italian, if that makes any sense, in the salsa. It just adds a good flavor. I mean, with all the other ingredients, um, it becomes just basically kind of like a, a, a vinaigrette. You don't really taste the Italian flavor, if that makes sense. So let me show you how we make this. This is so easy. We're basically just going to assemble it. In this large mixing bowl, I've got the can of corn that I drained, the can of Rotel that I drained, the black beans, I rinsed and drained those really well, and then the black eyed peas, I rinsed and drained really well. To that, I'm going to add the jalapeno that I finally diced. I removed the seeds, but you can feel free to leave the seeds in if you like things a little more on the spicy side. I'm going to add in those diced pimentos. I'm adding in some of the finely diced red onion. Then I'm going to add in the chopped cilantro and some lime juice. And while I'm doing that, I got a note for the Super Bowl. I'm curious, do you all even watch the Super Bowl? If you do watch it, do you watch it for the teams that are playing? Do you watch it because you're just a football fan? Uh, do you watch it you know, just because it's an excuse to eat lots of snacks and hang out with your friends. Do you watch it for the Super Bowl commercials? So let me know in the comments down below. And I'm, I'm genuinely curious. Me personally, we normally watch the Super Bowl. We're not big football fans. I mean, we like it okay, but it's just not something that we follow actively. Um, so for the Super Bowl, normally it's an excuse for us just to eat snacks and, and hang out. But this year, I'll be honest with you, I'm kind of stoked about the halftime show. I'm just going to be honest. I am going to be reliving my high school days, <laughs> so I'm kind of excited about that. But anyway, so I'm then going to add the Italian dressing. I, a dressing, dressing. I also added some salt and pepper. I'm going to give this a stir, and then that's it. You can, of course, eat this right away if you'd like, but it will be much better if you allow it to sit in the refrigerator, even for as little as 30 minutes. Um, but you'll just want to cover it, allow it to sit for a little bit, and then it's ready to serve to your guests. We like to eat this with some tortilla tortilla scoops, uh, chips, so that, you know, you can kind of get a, a big, a little bit of everything, so to speak. But this is so delicious. I really think your guests will love it. I recommend you all give this a try. Next, I tried a new recipe for barbecue ranch chicken tacos. This came from Kat over at Southern Farming Kitchen. I'll have a link to her video uh, in my description box below. These were really delicious. We really enjoyed these. They were super easy, budget friendly. Um, I really recommend you all give this a try for the Super Bowl or any game day. Like I said, it's budget friendly. It's easy. It will definitely feed a crowd. And this is something that you can make in your crock pot and then turn it on warm and people can just make their tacos and eat it, you know, as the game progresses. Now you could also, if you're having like Rotel dip or queso dip of any kind. You could also um, just serve this as nachos, serve some tortilla chips and some sides. That would be delicious as well. So for the ingredients, not very many. Like I said, really easy. 
you'll need some chicken breasts, some ranch dressing mix, barbecue sauce, and then some kind of seasoning for your chicken. You really could just use salt and pepper. I have some of this homemade barbecue rub on hand, and so I wanted to use that, and it gave it really great flavor. Okay, let me show you how to put th this together. I've sprayed my crock pot with some cooking spray. I'm going to add my chicken breasts, and then I'm adding some of the barbecue rub. Again, use whatever seasoning you like. I'm adding the dry ranch dressing mix, some of the barbecue sauce, use your favorite brand. I'm going to flip the chicken over and do the exact same thing on the opposite side. So add some of the barbecue rub, the dry ranch dressing mix, the barbecue sauce, and then that's it. I'm going to place a lid on this. You can cook this on low all day. You can cook it on high for maybe four or five hours. Um, my chicken breasts were still just a little bit frozen and I wanted to make sure they got done in time for dinner. So I cooked this on high for about two or three hours and then turned it down on low. Now you wanna make sure you cook the chicken until it's at least 165 degrees internal temperature and until it's really tender. Here's what my chicken looked like, um, you know, when it was done, when it was really tender. I just took one of those meat choppers and just kind of chopped up the chicken until it was shredded. Here's what that looks like. And then I just kind of set everything out so we can make our tacos. Miss Cat suggested adding lots of cheese and some cooked uh, crumbled bacon. So I set that out. We also had a little bit of shredded lettuce. I set out some chopped uh, tomatoes. And then I have this Hidden Valley um, Smokehouse secret sauce. We made some pulled pork fries a month or two ago. I'd seen it on um, an Instagram ad for Hidden Valley Ranch for this uh, smokehouse sauce. We tried that and they were delicious. So I thought, you know what? I bet that sauce would be good on these tacos. They were, they were delicious. So here is what our plate looks like. We had some of the tacos with some of that salsa and chips. So incredibly delicious. That salsa is amazing. And those tacos were delicious. I really recommend you all give both of these recipes a try. Finally, we gotta have something sweet, right? After the spicy chicken wings or the chili or the sliders, the dips, we need something sweet to round it out. This is definitely a crowd pleaser, especially if you've got you know, your kiddos hanging around who aren't necessarily thrilled with the game. They'll love this. Um, all the adults will love it. I know I've said several times in this video, this is easy, this is easy. Well, it's because these recipes are really easy. This is no exception. It's really just two ingredients. Here's what you'll need. You'll need some kind of chocolate. You can use uh, Hershey's chocolate bars. Uh, I only had a few of the little mini size though, and I didn't think it would be enough. So I also have some semi-sweet chocolate chips, and then you'll need marshmallows. I'm using mini marshmallows. You can use mini, you can use the regular size, whatever your preference is or whatever you've got on hand. I've got my oven preheating to 400 degrees. I sprayed my casserole dish with just a little bit of cooking spray. Now, um, I'm using the small casserole dish because it was just my husband and I. If you're doing this for a crowd, I would do like a nine by 13 or even better, um, like a cast iron skillet because as you pull that out of the oven, you're going to have some carryover heat from that cast iron that will keep the dip a little bit warm for you. Super easy, all we're gonna do is lay down a single layer of the chocolate, lay down a layer of the marshmallows, and then this is going to go into the preheated oven for about 15 to 20 minutes. You do wanna keep an eye on it though that your marshmallows don't burn. Once the marshmallows are toasted, that's it, it's ready to serve. Here are the dippers that I set out for us. Be creative, use what you've got on hand. Of course, maybe have some graham crackers in there. It is a s'mores dip after all. But then again, be creative, use what you like. I've got some pretzels, some apple slices, vanilla wafers, strawberries. You could also do some bananas, orange slices, different cookies, animal crackers. Again, whatever you and your guests or family would enjoy. All right, here's the finished dip and our dippers. This was super delicious. Our favorite dipper actually ended up being the apple slices, oddly enough. We really love the apple slices with the uh, chocolate and the marshmallows. So that's it for today's video. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the thumbs up button below and subscribe to my channel if you're not already. And I hope you have a great rest of the day. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.